a sin and what does the Bible say about masturbation so this topic will be touching some toes so be prepared if you're not if you're under 18 I recommend that you leave now because this is specifically for adult um, anyway there's no in the Bible that mention at all about masturbation being bad. So growing up in health class, the health uh, professor or you know the health teacher would usually teach us how to get familiar with our body, to get comfortable with ourselves. I mean, it's okay to get familiar, to get comfortable with who we are, with our whole body, to learn to appreciate our being. Because we need to appreciate us, love us, ourselves, in order for us to be able to appreciate other people, especially once we're married. Like I said again, there's nothing in the Bible that mention about masturbation is bad that it is a sin so this doesn't mean that we can go on to do whatever we want with our body us God people Christian people God is calling us to be holy because what lead to masturbation touching body touching our private part etc can lead to more like pornography and lead the door to temptation, further temptation, which is pornography, which is really big now in today's society. We don't know what behind the closed door, but we all been there and been done that. And human flesh, we will continue to sin. But what makes us different from the unbeliever, us a Christian, a Christ follower, is that once we follow Jesus Christ, we are dead to sin and alive in Christ. So let me explain what dead to sin and alive in Christ mean. In the book of Romans chapter 6, 1 to 15, I'm going to read to you if you can bear with me. Dead to sin, alive in Christ. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no mean. This is Paul, written by Paul. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For we have been united with him in death like this. We will certainly be also united him in the restoration like his. For we know our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. That we no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we die with Christ, we believe that we also live with Him. For we know that sin in Christ was raised from the dead. He cannot die again. Death no longer has a mastery over Him. The death He died, He died to sin one for all. But the life He lived, He lived to God. In the same way, count yourself dead to sin, but alive in Christ. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your moral body, so that you may obey evil desire. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourself to God as those who have been bought from death to life. And offer every part of yourself to Him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. So in this, Paul clearly said we are alive in Christ now. 
we are no longer slaves to sin. Yes, we will continue sin sometime, but we are set apart from the unbeliever. When we sin, there is a conscience in us that says sinning is bad and would help us move from it. But for the unbeliever, it is normal for them. And also, it's best, it say that, in Genesis chapter 2, verse uh, 18, it say, The Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a suitable helper. So in this way, that's why you save your body for your marriage union because marriage will keep you from sinning for anyone who cannot remain alone has to get married because temptation of the flesh is real i hope this helped and answer a little bit have a wonderful day